Hello everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I'm Alan and this is part four in our 10 part series on basic photo editing. Today we're going to be looking at the histogram and the tone curve. So we are back in Lightroom and like with the previous session where we worked on the basic panel, we're going to look at two additional panels today, the histogram and the tone curve. Now, most of us starting out use the histogram as a way to check that uh, the distribution of luminance and color within our photograph is acceptable and that we're not clipping any of our uh, highlights or shadows. And that is what we used it for last time when we were working in the basic panel and we were seeing the histogram move as we played with the sliders. I'm going to show you today how the histogram can actually be used to do those edits directly rather than doing them in the basic panel. Though the basic panel certainly gives you options to do things that you cannot do in the histogram, there's still a lot of power in working with the histogram. The histogram split up into five areas, blacks, shadows, exposure, uh, lights, uh, uh, highlights, and whites. Now, we can change the intensity in any of those zones simply by hovering over it, clicking the cursor, and increasing or decreasing the intensity. And you'll notice that the slider is, is moving as I do that. Same goes for the exposure. By sliding the exposure to the right or to the left, the slider is moving with it, but we're able to do these adjustments directly within the histogram. Uh, an important feature of the histogram is these triangular icons at the top of the, the graph. These indicate when detail is being lost in the photograph, either lost in the highlights or lost in the shadows that are either too light or too dark for us to make out detail. Now, most of the time you don't want to have clipping anywhere in your photograph, but sometimes it's not a big deal to have a little bit of clipping uh, on the left of the graph, other, in other words, in the darkest parts of the photograph like we have here. Uh, that is coming from this area on the log uh, that is not revealing any detail because it's too dark, but I can accept that on an evening time photograph like this. Seldom is there ever a good reason to have clipping of the highlights. That generally doesn't ever look good. If you want to see where the clipping is actually going on, you can actually click on the icon. And what that will do is put a mask over the photograph showing in blue the areas that you're clipping the shadows. And if we were to say bump up the exposure to where we're clipping in the highlights as well, you can see the red overlay indicating uh, lost detail in the highlights. By the way, there is a keyboard shortcut J that turns on and off both of the uh, uh, overlay masks to show your areas of clipping. So we'll put that back where it was. Also in the histogram, so long as you're image is highlighted in the film strip. You'll see your camera settings when the photograph was taken. And uh, this can be useful information as you edit. Another thing that you'll see in the histogram along this bottom row is a notation as to which photograph you're using. This becomes most important if you're using smart previews. We talked about them, I think, in the first uh, episode in this series. Smart previews are slightly compressed images, smaller image than the original file that are held in Lightroom to allow you to edit when you're separated from your main editing computer or your hard drive. For example, if you're traveling with a laptop, you can edit smart previews on the run 
uh, and then the settings that you uh, apply to the smart preview will be applied to the photograph when you next connect to your uh, catalog. In this case, it's the original photo because I did not generate a smart preview for this. If I wanted to do that now, I could just click on original photo and it will open a dialog box telling me what a smart preview is and how to use it. And it would build that and the original photo notification here under the histogram would change to smart preview. So there are two other very useful things you can get out of the histogram. The first is which process version you're using. That means when this photograph was first imported into Lightroom, which process was used to prepare the image for editing. We're currently in process version five. If you were in, if the photograph here was in any other process version, there would be a lightning bolt icon right here. And you would just click on that and it would give you the option of updating the process version to process version five, which is the latest one. And it would warn you that that may uh, make some changes in your photograph. So there is an option for you to look at a preview and decide if you want to make the change. Generally speaking, I update mine to the latest process, uh, process version uh, whenever I see the warning. Now, the other very useful thing that you can get out of the histogram is information about the color in your photograph. There are a lot of different reasons that you would want to know precisely what shade a given object is in your photograph, whether it's uh, to match with other photographs or uh, in the case of, say, product photography, where you needed extremely accurate color reproduction. By default, when uh, you hover your cursor over the image, you'll see below the histogram, uh, it is giving you the percentages of uh, luminosity in each of the R, G, and B channels, so that at any given point, you can tell precisely what the color coordinates are if you will, that describe the color under your cursor. The numbers for each channel represent percentages with 100% in any of the channels being pure red, green, or blue. If you're editing photographs in Photoshop, say, and you're working in 8-bit, uh, the range of possible values for the colors will be significantly broader. It's one to 255, with 255 representing pure uh, color in each of the channels. If you right click on your histogram, you can also show the lab color values instead of the RGB. This is just a different system for measuring color, and I'm not gonna go into the details of it, because it's, uh, I think at this point, just unnecessarily confusing. So that is basically what you can uh, see and what you can do in the histogram. And uh, the main point being that if you wanted to directly edit your photograph from the histogram, it's just simply a matter of clicking and sliding to increase or decrease uh, the luminosity of any particular area of the photographs in terms of relative brightness. The next thing that we're going to look at is the tone curve, which is a very powerful tool in Lightroom and very helpful in creating contrast in a way that is more subtle and nuanced than the way you would uh, produce it by using the slider for contrast in the basic panel. So when you open the tone curve in Lightroom, it opens to this view. This is the basic parametric tone curve uh, that uh, it opens by default and allows you to apply changes in uh, luminosity throughout your photograph based on what area of the photograph uh, the, uh, that you're interested in. For example, uh, if I wanted to lower the luminosity in the lightest parts of the image, I could, if 
first of all, simply slide the intensity on the highlights down. That would accomplish that. I could also just grab the curve and pull it down in the highlights area and achieve exactly the same thing. Not only that, I could click on this icon. This is the targeted adjustment tool, which would allow me to click on a part of the image that I was interested in, click on it and drag it down and it would do the same thing. So we can do these, uh, these adjustments to the intensity of specific zones within the photograph, either within the photograph on the curve or with the sliders, either way. And that's very useful. What makes it even more useful is that we can redefine what we mean by highlights and, and shadows. By grabbing these adjustment triangles, we can make the highlights specific to a much narrower range of brights, uh, meaning that changes we make in that area are now going to far more specifically only affect the brightest points in the photograph. And similarly elsewhere, we can move any of these anywhere we want to create uh, a situation where our adjustments are applied to as specific an area as we wish. If you double click on the region uh, name here, it will reset everything to the way it was. As useful as this is for creating contrast, simply by making your brights a little brighter, your darks a little darker, you can create punch just as the contrast slider does in the basic panel. But if you want to get into a little more of the magic of the tone curve, go to the bottom row here and click on the icon to the far right. This is the point curve. And when we open it, the sliders disappear. We still have the uh, targeted adjustment tool if we want to use it. But what we gain is additional channels in which we can make adjustments. So the default is the RGB channel, which is what we just saw. That will change the intensity um, in the image. But unlike the parametric curve, any change that I make to any part of this curve is going to affect the entire curve. So if I lower the intensity, it is going to lower the intensity in the highlights where my pointer is, but it's also going to lower them along the curve. The curve behaves just like a curve that you would see when you're using the pen tool in Photoshop, for instance, meaning that you are changing the curve around anchor points that you define. So if I didn't want my darkening of the highlights to affect other parts of the curve, I could reduce the highlights where I want them reduced, add a new point and bring the rest of the curve back up to where I wanted it. And you can add as many points as you want to create whatever effects you want. An additional feature that uh, is, let me put that back on linear, an additional feature that you can do with the uh, point curve is you can actually change the black point and change the white point, uh, which when done to their maximum extreme gives you a negative image. So that's uh, useful to know. And for creative reasons, you can use uh, the point curve to create effects like the very popular matte effect, uh, which you can achieve by raising the black point just a little bit and bringing the rest of the curve back down to normal. It creates the appearance uh, of um, a print on uh, some type of matte medium. It adds a softness uh, to the photograph, which is uh, quite popular uh, with some photographers. Let's put that back to linear. The real power in, in tweaking your contrast comes from the fact that not only do you have this grayscale RGB channel, which addresses just luminosity, but by opening the drop down menu, you can also get into the red, green and blue channels and add similar tweaks to the colors within your photograph. For example, if I click on the green, 
uh, I could increase the amount of green in the darker areas of the photograph and let's pull back the green out of the lighter areas that we don't want. And what we've done now is added uh, a, a more dynamic color contrast, if you will, to the green. Remember that the, the opposite of green is magenta. And as you pull the curve down below the, the median line here, you'll start introducing magenta into the highlight. So this is a cool way to cross process, uh, just like you would with uh, split toning, which is something we're gonna get into in more detail later. And you have this capability in all three channels. So you can add redness to an image or you can take it away and add cyan. And you can, just like before, you can do it in different areas of the curve to different creative effects. It's one of those tools that's endlessly fascinating to play around with. It's very powerful uh, if your uh, photography includes abstract graphic uh, uh, type of creations, then this tool allows you to uh, create some really marvelous effects. It's uh, something that is best used very cautiously and uh, in, in small increments. A little goes a long way when you're messing around with the color curves. I hope that was useful. I know it's a little bit technical and maybe not something you're gonna use on an everyday basis, but it's really good to understand what is actually happening when you're applying or removing contrast. And as you use it and practice with it, I think you'll find that uh, it does add an interesting creative dimension to your photography and to your editing. Well, next up, we're gonna be talking about color. We're gonna get into the hue, saturation, and luminance panel, which is gonna be a, a whole discussion uh, about color. So I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing you for that. I hope this was useful. If it was, uh, please, give it a thumbs up or even subscribe to the channel. We'll have uh, more videos coming out very soon. I really appreciate you joining me today. Have yourself a good week, stay out of trouble, and I will see you in a very few short days with video number five. Good day.